What? What is good guys? That was a good clap. Happy Dunk Tip Tuesday today. Barth joins me. He talks about how he turned dunking into a career. He gives his best tips for that, but also best tips in general when it comes to dunk training. He also talks about the five dunks he's done that no one else has ever done in the world and the six that he's working on. Hint, hint, we get to name it in this episode and also the best dunker that's out right now. And we also discuss if that dunk is possible, the self bounce in the air with Dan Gross getting very close. Rhyme intended. So, special episode today. Hope you guys enjoy. Let's get into it. Just sit back, relax, and freaking listen. And by the way, Barth's on a secret mission we can't disclose, but if you stay tuned with this podcast in the future, we'll disclose it. He's literally in a hotel room. Let's go! Dunk Tip Tuesday. It's playing right now. All we do is talk. Dunk Tip Tuesday. Boy, you don't want to jump. Dunk Tip Tuesday. Oh, shit. No, my bird is going up. Dunk Tip Tuesday. That's me, baby. And I do it for the love. Dunk Tip Tuesday. No, I do it for myself. Go to Tuesday. And I can never get enough. Go to Tuesday. And I ain't never given up. Go to Tuesday. Go to Tuesday. You can't hear it, right? Go to Tuesday. As long as the fans can they hear can it. They can hear it. Alright, so, so hit matters. it. Like ready? I'm gonna do it right as you do it. Ready? Set, go. Go to Tuesday. It went, but you didn't hear it. Oh, I was con- <laughs> <laughs> I was confused. Where are you? What is happening? The universe continues. The earth is still spinning. I'm still alive. And I've gotten a haircut since the last time I was on Dunk. Oh, that's how we started. And I was doing a recording by myself, trying to do a solo podcast. And I was saying, it's good to be alive. We're back on another Tuesday, which means we didn't die this week. So that's something that anybody in the world listening to this could say, thank you. Dunk to Tuesday. <laughs> good job. <world. laughs> and you are in a hotel room. I'm in a hotel room in And you have the that's because you're hunting the best greatest dunk tip Tuesday uh, tips of all time, right? That's where they are. I'm actually out and about searching for the the lost hidden tips of dunkers of old. And let me tell you, it takes And you found work. it? Lots of archaeology uh archaeology, lack of archaeology, but I haven't found hmm. it yet. But I feel like I'm getting really close. It's kind of like that movie with uh what is it uh the movie about like all Star the Wars. presidents in like the United States and Star Wars. Huh? No, <laughs> no, no, it's not like Star Wars. Um, Tuesday. National Treasure. It's like National Treasure. By the way, I'm going to mention to the people watching like, that I can hear all these things that you guys can hear, but Barth can't hear. When I go, what the fuck? I just made an actual dunk sound, actual yeah. fucking dunk sound, and I said it off the wrong fuck. I'm supposed to co- cover my words, but I didn't. But what the Dunk Tip Tuesday. Dunk Tuesday right there. But nobody hears that except us. Barth, you're the only, you're the only one actually not I'm hearing it. All right. So you're talking about Star Wars. So Go on. Included. About what Star about Wars? It? Or about yeah, National yeah, yeah, Treasure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nicolas Cage. So um, I am like Nicolas Cage in National Treasure. And I am out searching for the answers to the original foundation of dunk life. Have you, uh, what so. if we made a whole documentary or we ended up making a movie searching for it in a very similar fashion? We should do that. That would be great. We should do that one day. Be... Let me pitch it to some people I know. So what are you doing in Connecticut? Cool. Can't say. I'm under NDA to is not say. Is it dunk related? It is Whoa. dunk related. Would you... But not in the way that you might Whoa. think. Whoa, what the? I bit a sound again. You can't hear it. So what's up, um, man? Oh. Why are you doing that? Cause man, it's a cool thing for the dunk game. Um, it's a cool thing for me. It'll be fun. I get to stay in a hotel room for three months. Whoa. So three months yeah. in Connecticut? Yeah. Oh my god. I honestly have no idea what's happening right now. But um can I come visit? If you want to I would to, never yeah. go there. We can have a dunk session. Here. Never, dude. I'd never go to Connecticut. How close is that to Boston? Oh, no. Not far. Like 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 nine hours not far or like one hour? You want me yeah, to because up, I'm going I mean, to Boston next week. Because uh, we're living our dream lives out my, here. From my exact location, it is a three-hour drive to Boston. Whoa, that's not bad, but I'm not doing it. That's not too bad. That's not bad, but I'm not doing it. Just, just mean I drove here and just mean I'm driving down to Boston to hang out? If you want. I might only be there for a day, but... Well, I might only be there for an hour. So. All right, so we got any tips for the folks back home? You know, people are tuning in. They're chilling out. They're like, oh, I need a good podcast to unwind. Oh, I need some dunk life tips in my life tips to freaking help folks. me jump. I just want to I just want to be like Stephen Barth. I just want to dunk like them. 
my advice for the people, which is always very relevant to what's going on in my life, is sometimes in life, you have to expand, you have to do more, you have to think more broadly, things like that. This is what we talked about the last time, right? Sometimes in life, you have to do the opposite. You have to look at what worked. You have to, you know, follow a process, not move on to the next one. Um, so sometimes in life, you're expanding. Sometimes in life, you're contracting, but not to get smaller. You're contracting to get bigger. Because the truth is, is you can't focus on everything at one time. So sometimes you have to focus on one thing so that eventually you can focus on other ah. things. If you never finish anything, you never get to do anything. I else. like that. He brought it back, folks. I thought he was going nowhere with that, but he brought it back. And that reminds me of this. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. Uh, I did. A, there was a book that talked about like doing those things. I forget the quote, but it's like if you dial into all those little things and you focus on the little things, you have to. But I'm, I'm in the same energy. You got to you got to just it brings us all the way back down to the moment. You got to do what you can do right now. And you can't tell us what you're contracting on? Um, I mean, I can tell you the general gist of what I'm contracting Yeah, on. please. So a lot of what I've been doing in the last, like, six months, nine months, mostly has been, like, um, kind of like, I would say, I would call it self-rediscovery. Whoa. Um, you know, lots of change in my life. Um... I wouldn't say lots of negative things happening, but just, you know, like lots of unexpected change the last year. Basically. I had a question that I was asking myself. That sounds really good. And it led me to this question, by the way. It was hard to do the podcast alone um, because I was trying to answer this question. I think jumping helps you eliminate your ego. Have you experienced that? I think that's interesting. I think that it can I think that being passionate about anything right. can help you eliminate your ego. Well, the reason I bring um, it up is because especially at our, our, at our stage, we're at, at such a high level that at this point it's like do something else already. But because we love it so much, there, there's almost no ego. It's just for the pure joy. So sometimes it starts like that and then it becomes ego. But then if, you, if you're doing it for the mastery of it, like you're doing it for just the just the attempt, just the pursuit of greatness for yourself, yourself is the key, then I think it helps everything. I definitely think I've gone through that. Like, I think I got away from dunking for the love of it. It started like that, obviously. And then when I made like a little money on it, I was like, whoa, whoa. like now it's a serious thing and all that. And then I realized it was never that serious to begin <laughs> with. And I don't know why I ever became so serious. And now I'm back to just having fun with it again. And now that I'm having fun with it again, I'm doing more things than I've ever done. Whoa. But the Are you talking about you kind of went, you started off with just the love of it. Then you expanded to like, whoa, I could do a lot with this. And you're like, wait a second. There's not that much. I only want to just dunk. And you contracted back and now you're expanding because you contracted? Correct. So like, like I like expanded out because I was like, like dunking could take me places. I lost the purpose behind dunking that took me where I even was. Then as I like experienced that for a while and I kind of like when I lost the purpose of why I was doing it, I didn't get the goals. Then I like retracted, regained the purpose because I realized that's what I lost. And then all my goals started happening again because I had, I'm, I was, it was easy to do it again because I had the purpose back. Isn't that I never did it for the money. I never did it for the goals. I did it because of the underlying purpose. Yeah. Which is it's fun. <laughs> Dunk tip Tuesday. Same thing with work. So yeah. So um, anywho, I know you you work a lot to get better at coaching, and that's what you're always like working on, whether it's your actual programming or studying. But are you reading anything outside of jump relating or something that's different than you? <clears throat> I promised someone yesterday that I'm gonna read the Golden Compass. Whoa! What's that one? Let's look it up for the folks. It's it's some like a it's like a fiction book. Okay, I'm going to read the summary for our listeners real quick. The Golden Compass opens as a Lyra Bellacqua, a young girl. Okay, wait. What the hell? Give me a summary. The Golden Compass 
a similar uh, alternate world similar to Earth, a young girl who's been given shelter by the scholars. Come on, give me a summary over here. Can you give me one? I, I don't know what it's about. Oh, okay. So this is good for you too. Um, uh, someone I know, this is their favorite book. And they, they told me that like the, the actual story is just amazing and the writing's amazing. So Okay, why can't I find a just normal summary? Here we go, the Golden Compass su summary. This is a nine-paragraph summary. Just give me like a... Where's Amazon? Start reading. <laughs> Hold on. I'm just going to order it on Amazon, and we'll do this podcast until it arrives. And then... Wait, is it called Northern Lights? I keep coming... It keeps coming up with... Oh, here it is. There's three books, I think. Uh, modern fantasy classic. Oh my goodness gracious. All right. So I'll just read this. Cause this is the, what it says. It's two paragraphs. Lyra is rushing to the cold far North where witch clans and armored bears rule. Huh? North where the go gobblers take the children. They steal, they steal, including her friend, Roger North where her foursome uncle Azriel is trying to build a bridge to a parallel world. These names are way too difficult. Can one small girl make a difference in such a great and terrible endeavors? This is Lyra, a savage, a schemer, a liar, and a, as a fierce and a true champion as Roger or Azriel could want. But what Lyra doesn't know is what one helped them to betray the other, a masterwork of storytelling and suspense. All right, there you go. There you go. Arguably the best juvenile fantasy novel of the past 20 years, says the Washington Post. <laughs> juvenile fantasy. That's, that's, what, that's what you're going to get into, baby. I like that. All right. All right. So aside that's from it, juvenile yeah. fantasies, anything else new in Barth's world? Anything else new in Barth's world other than the things I can't speak of? Um, um, yeah, it's a lot I of moved. Oh, where do you live now? So I still live in like Clearwater, Florida. Oh, just a different spot. Um, but I moved. I have a roommate now, so that's cool. Um, should we start playing video games? Start playing video yeah. games? Yeah. I think it depends. Like streaming. I think it'd be so fun. If you mean me and you, yeah. yes. I think maybe we should now and then. You're saying like other people. As long as we don't do it too much, you know. I had my podcast yesterday was about distractions versus enjoyment. How do you distinguish the two? How do I distinguish the two? Hmm. I think distractions are things that keep you from doing things you need to do. And enjoyments are things that actually help you do what you should do when you need to be doing. Wow, that's a great answer. But what about like watching Star Wars? Well, I think watching Star Wars is fine. You have to think, think about life like this. I know the think answer, but life. I want to hear what you say. Okay, well, this is what I'm going to say. I'm going to make it way more complicated than it needs to be. Think about life. So think about life in like different aspects, right? So there's like, there's you, there's like, you know, your girlfriend and you, there's single, like, you know, work, your sport, whatever. And then there's like the rest of mankind. <laughs> if whatever you're doing is like in some way benefiting these things, yeah, that's good. So maybe you're watching a movie with your girlfriend that gives you insight about like global things Whoa. that's helping like three parts of your life, right? Like it doesn't help this one, but it helps these. Okay. Well, you could just work till one in the morning and that'll help these two. But this one helps, you know, three. I don't think I've ever done this. So I've never done this before. So. I've never done this to one. Can you see this one I'm doing? What in the world? I've never done that one. You just did that. <laughs> <laughs> you just did but, that. But um, so, yeah. Anyway, the point is, though, that I think it's totally fine. I think it's just life is not a sprint. Life is a marathon. So if you have a schedule and like say on your schedule, you have to work from eight to six. Okay. Work from eight to six, but then from six to 12, enjoy yourself, do mm. other things. But as long as you get your other things done, like if you keep your house clean, you know, you're eating, you're still eating well and you decide you're going to play games for three hours. Cool. Play games for three hours. Does it, does it bring you enjoyment? Does it bring you happiness? Do you and your friends enjoy it together? That's great. Yeah. It's, there's nothing wrong with that, but just do whatever you're doing, no matter what it is, just do it. Just actually do it. Be there and do it. So when you're working, Wise. work, and when you're playing, play. Woo. But just don't mix the two. I like, like that. No. But you kind of mix the two. You can mix. the. Th what I'm saying is, though, is like uh, my work is play because I enjoy it so much. There you go. But, it, but when I'm working, I'm working. It's not – I'm not just doing it for the fun of it. Like I do do it for the fun of it, but it's still – 
for me, it's the same thing. What was the biggest shift that helped you turn dunking into your career? Um, the, or the like hardest obstacle? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What was the hardest part for you to like, uh, like you would tell your younger self that you could really make dunking a career? Good question, I think Steve. that the hardest thing, honestly, was to just start. I think, um, like, when I first started training, like, way back in the day, like, back when I was on Bounce Kit, um, like, it, before I had really even talked to any of y'all that much, um, I was like, oh, there's no way. Like, I'm good, but I'll never be that good. And I kind of had to, like, tell myself, you know what? It doesn't matter if you get that good. Like, just do it. So I just did it. Wow. Like, I wouldn't say that it was necessarily hard, but it was scary. Yeah. Like a little bit. I didn't realize it at the time, but I was like, I was spending so much time on it when I first started that like, you know, if it hadn't worked out, it would have been a quote unquote waste of time. I don't believe that anymore. Obviously I don't think yeah. anything's a waste of time ever. I love but, that. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, that's the yeah, hardest that thing. Definitely the hardest part. That's the hardest thing I think for, I think that's one of the biggest tips you could possibly give someone that's starting dunking or trying to go to that level is that, just go for it because a lot of times we want to stop or there's like, there's no way I can do that. And that already stops you right there. Yep. Doubt. Doubt's a word. It's a word. What's one of your biggest, mine is like, uh, the fe fear. Like I, I don't, I don't want to ever act in fear um, of things. Doubt, fear mm -hmm. and anxiety are like the same thing, but do you have one that stands out for you? Doubt is the same as fear I actually. I don't ever want to have to say I either did something I didn't want to do or I didn't do something I did. Mm, I like the second one's stronger it, for me. It's like a, it's like a personal integrity thing. So like, like if I, like, I'll, I'll give you an example, right? Like I'm not really into drugs. Like drugs just aren't my thing. Everyone has their own, like whatever that, you know, they're into and that's fine. Yeah. But if I go against my thing and I went and did drugs, like, I would feel really bad. That's just how I am though. Yeah. So like, that's something I would ne like, I wouldn't do it. I just, I couldn't. And it's not that I dislike anyone who does. I don't, it doesn't bother me at all for other people, but for me, I can't do it. And then in the same sense for myself, like I need to be in shape. So if I don't work out, that's something I should do. And if I don't do it, that's bad. And my fear is doing things I truly don't want. And when I say truly don't want, I mean like literally that like me, the whatever Hurts your soul. person being thing, like I don't want. And um, like in the past, I would get talked into things and like I knew I didn't want to do it at the time, but I would still did it because I was like letting people convince me that I was you, someone else. How do you get over that? How did you get better at deciphering those or getting stronger mm -hmm. at saying no? I think a lot of it was just like, just realizing. I think the truth is like, you know, everyone knows who they are. Like deep down, you really know. Um, but it's cloudy on top, right? It's very cloudy. That's, that's, that's what just, I love about the metaphor. That's where the experience comes in though. Like you have to not be scared to experience things because I'm, I'm not saying go out and try like all this crazy stuff that you're not sure if it's you. But what I'm saying is like, if something isn't you, just don't be scared to say that. Or, yeah. you know, follow that. And if something is you, don't be scared to be judged by that. Yeah, like, that's hard to people do. People think dunking's derpy. Lots of people think it's dumb. <laughs> or, like, it doesn't matter. That. And the yeah. truth is, is, like, I don't care because it yeah. matters to me and that's all that matters. Bars, bars for Barth. I'm out I here like, rapping. Oh, my. When are you going to drop a track? You told the fans you're going to drop a track. You promised them one. No joke. I was thinking about this yesterday. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. When are you going to drop me a beat? No, that's I don't do beats. I do raps. You do the beats. I don't know, man. Drop a rap what, for the fans. Whenever I can get down to uh, where you live and we can just drop an album. Yeah, we should do that. That'd be really That fun. would actually be hilarious to drop like a... Uh, I don't even... What would we call the album? That's the real question. Barth's Bars. Barth's. <laughs> we just put an S before the this, T. This is a funny album name for you, but it would be like Celibit, but Celibit. <laughs> There's this produce company on Instagram called Celis, C E L I S. Mm -hmm. And whenever I watch their stuff, it's so weird because they're just like, come to Celis, try the Celis thing. It's weird, but it's awesome. I'm like, I'm my biggest fan.
Like, I want to get endorsed I, by them. I can think of so many celery themed album names. Like you could have one called like Celery. Like I'm just thinking of dumb names. What does Celery mean? I don't know, dude. That it's like, like the whole, like all the tracks are like real fresh, super crispy. You really got to <laughs> bite into it to understand. You know? Oh goodness gracious. Um. Barth, what's the latest you've seen in the dunk world? Any dunkers you like that you saw recently or any crazy dunks you saw on the gram? Um, well, I think Dan Gross is probably like the craziest thing in dunking right now. I think he's about to do a lot of stuff that like. Do you think he's going to get the self-bounce dunk? Yeah, I do. He's about to get it, right? I, I think he'll, I think he could get it by the end of the year easily. Dude, I think he could get it like, what's today? September? I mean, I think he, he could hit it any day. Yeah. But I think he'll make it before the year's out. Yeah. So, that dunk is insane. Yeah, that dunk is um Dan's different. Let's just put it that way. He's got he's one of those athletes that for dunking especially, he's got the perfect physique. Yeah. He's the right he's got, height. Yeah. He's got the right length of arms. Like he's not too long, not too short. Yeah. And he just has dumb bounce. Is there any other yeah, gross bounce. Is he got any uh, other crazy dunks that you think maybe landed for the first time ever this year? I don't know if he's working on anything that I haven't seen. Not just him, but anybody else that you're thinking of, like, trying something crazy. Any other cool feats? I think I'm going to hit a new crazy dunk before the year's out. Really? Yeah. Can you give us a hint? I've tried it before. On publicly? Mm-hmm. And it's got a name? No. Can you give us a name what you would name it? No. No? Nope. Because you don't want to give it away? Mostly that, but I also I just don't know what I would call it. It's That's what I figured. Yeah. Can you give us some? Uh, <laughs> can you give us some? Can you say if you okay? Can we name it right now? And if you land it by this time, it has to be called that. I'll call it the Whirly Bird. If we land it by what? I'll, I'll call it. Uh, like, what's the most ambitious date? That's realistic. I would say like two and a half months from now. Okay, so two and a half months, October, November, so December first. Yeah. My birthday's December 4th. Okay, well, let's make it the 4th then. May the 4th be with you. Star Wars, full circle on this podcast. So if you hit it by December 4th, whatever this dunk is, is going to be called the Whirly Bird. And you get to name it like you're landing on a planet. I want to call it the Celery now really bad. All right, I'm fine with that. All right, fun. It's called but the Celery. I'll even called do the an album drop for it. I'll, I'll like If I make it, I'll have like a Celery like thumbnail. But it's definitely one of those where if you land it, it's like landing on the moon and you could claim the name of the, you didn't name the moon, but. 100%. You could, no one's ever done it. No one's even oh attempted it other than me as far as I know. You so, guys are hearing this first. If he lands it by the freaking December 4th, a new brand new dunk. This will be my sixth brand new dunk that I've ever done that no one's ever done. So, six? Yeah. Wait, you've done five? Yeah. Oh, let's see if I can get them. Ready? All right. He's done the Pico de Gallo three. You've done the uh, the razor the razor s slice. Yes. The trapeze elbow. Big facts. The garage trench. Which one was that? No, I think that no. Sorry, that was um that was Jeremy uh, Bishop. Okay. Uh, you've done the. Oh, the silk slam. You've done the silk slam. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That was a good one. Yeah. How many? That's four, right? Yeah, that's four. One more. What's the last one? I can't. If you don't remember the oh. last one, I'll actually lose it. Oh, dude, the 360 centipede. Yeah, 100%. That's Bro, actually probably a good name for it, too. <laughs> and now you're doing the friggin' celery, dude, by December yeah. 4th. No, really, let's go the, through the dunks the you've done. Can I, let me try. I know one of them. For sure, you did the one where Isaiah threw it between your legs. Yep. At Where was that? Uh, Riga Latvia. Uh, can you send me these clips, by the way? Maybe I'll throw them in the podcast. I'd have to go find them. I know. That's why I don't want to do it. Okay. Well, you go look for it. Okay. Just go Rika on my Lapia, Instagram somewhere. You've done... Uh, dude, I don't know. Reverse pump crown or something like that? Um, Actually, so in in the order I've done them, I believe yeah. it's went off the wall. Yeah. Um, the went off the wall is nasty. I did the reverse scorpion, like the scoop, reverse scoop scorpion. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, that's crazy. I did the Isaiah thing. 
Yeah. I did the behind the back, off the backboard tap to myself. Oh, thing. right. That thing is disgusting. And then also I did a dunk in Dunk League that has never been done before, but I'm not allowed to say what it is because I'm under NBA. Oh, sick. And, but you I can did say it here, dude. Try. No one's listening. <laughs> dunk League. Watch it. Except for my millions of followers. First, first episode comes out September 27th, so go Oh, watch dude, it, that's sick, dude. That's coming on in two weeks. Yeah. Oh, I actually did... did one I... more? I may have done a six dunk that no one's done. It's also in Dunk League, but I'm not sure. All right, Jordan give them some energy Kogan to end might it. Have done it. I'm not sure. Give them some energy to end the podcast, baby. What could they look forward to this week of their life? I'm getting pizza tonight, and it's Fuck. cheat day. And and all I'm saying is like, enjoy yourself. Enjoy get yourself. Some pizza. Dunk tip freaking Tuesday. I'm gonna roll the outro right now. You could act like you're dancing. Dunk tip Tuesday. It's playing right now. All we do is talk. Dunk tip Tuesday. <laughs> Boy, you don't want to jump. Duck to Tuesday. Oh, shit. Know my bird is going Damn. up. Duck to Tuesday. Knees, baby. And I do it for the love. Duck to Tuesday. You know I do it for my subs. Duck to Tuesday. And I can never I can get never enough. I can never get enough, Duck to Tuesday. And I ain't never giving up. I'm never giving up. Duck to Tuesday. Boom. All right. Love you, Bart. Duck to Tuesday. That was it.